Well, hey, my friends, I'm so glad that you're with me here on another episode of The Thriving Christian Artist. Really excited to have uh, Chad Atkins with me, who is a Canadian artist. Uh, God's doing some great things in his life, and he's here to talk about those things today. So, Chad, welcome, man. Glad that you're on the podcast with me today. Thanks so much. It's an honor to be here, and it feels surreal. I've watched you for a couple of years and I can't believe I'm on your podcast. I know. That's awesome. So do you listen to the podcast often? Or? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I found it uh, all, just when COVID started uh, a couple of years ago. How and because awesome. uh, I'm just working through this God and art thing, which has been a, a struggle for me yeah. to work through. Yeah. And when I found you, I was like, thank God there's somebody else out there <laughs> who uh, is, uh, you know, helping. It's great. I love it. I love it. So for folks that are kind of just getting to know you and everything, maybe tell us a little bit about where you are, what you do creatively, and then we'll kind of jump into a little bit of, of your backstory. Okay. So my name's Chad Atkins. I live in uh, Wilsonville, Ontario, Canada. Um, I've got an awesome wife and two awesome kids. Um, they're late teens, early 20s. I have a, a renovation business uh, for about 18 years. And um, I'm a landscape artist. Nice, nice. So, so did you grow up in a creative family? Was, was art a part of your life early on? Or? Yes. So my, my dad is a gunsmith, making guns and carving and all of that. My mom is an artist. Wow. She, uh, she uh, taught art in our basement uh, my whole life living at home. And she always painted. And from the time I was... Uh, three or as long young as I can remember I drew every single day wow uh in, until I was 19 and uh then uh um basically I had a radical conversion God spoke to me in my bedroom and just rocked my world and uh I discovered uh Smith Wigglesworth oh wow you know <laughs> you just jumped and, in the and, deep uh, end right right quick uh, right <laughs> It floored me. I, I, I heard about it and I wondered if it was true. And then I read the book and I remember that night um, just crying out to God all night long in my sleep even. I have to do this with my life, mm. you know, and it really kind of, you know, uh, ruined me. And so then through there, it was I threw it everything, anything that's going to hinder, just throw it overboard. Yeah. So I, I had a car with a huge stereo system and loved heavy metal. I, I still do, but I got rid of all my CDs, even Christian, everything. And I was like hardcore hymns, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, listening yeah. to only hymns for only a few months that lasted, but just, you know, art, you know, I knew it was, I was good at it. I saw no value. How could this, I threw it out. And so now, uh, I'm so interested because so many people, I mean, I grew up kind of in the same way. I, I remember, mm -hmm. um, I often laugh. I, I remember, I, I for some reason, I had gotten Michael Jackson's Thriller album when I was a young teen, and my mom found out, and boy, she flew in there and she threw that, literally broke it and threw it out the window. We were there was there wasn't anything like that in our house, and I remember, you know, having a very um, church oriented, very kind of um, I don't know, traditional view of what it meant to be a Christian, what it meant to love the Lord, what it meant to do anything that would pursue what I felt like was a calling on my life, much less just live the Christian life. And so I can, I mean, I can totally yeah. relate to you. I'm sure a lot of our listeners can too, of, of this oh, idea yeah. of if it doesn't fit within what I think is the church box or, or yeah. the, the radical give my life, you know, for the cause of the kingdom that I've seen so far, Mm -hmm. then it's got to go. And you're saying right. for you, even though you loved art, that wasn't something that you even knew how to contextualize in that. Is that, is that right? Oh, it's true. I saw no value in it. You know, mm. I, the, the old time revivalist is Charles Finney yeah. and you know, John G Lake and, and Jonathan Edwards and David Brainerd, you know, their words were fire in their mouths and the people were like dry grass. I just didn't see any room for, for art you know, for years, I just was never on my mind. I, it, although I do, I did know it is the only thing that I know I'm good at. Naturally. Mm. Wow. So how do, how are you reconciling that at that time? Cause 
Or were you kind of in performance mode of I'm just going to work for Jesus and, you know, give my life to the cause and that sort of thing. And regardless of this thing that I'm feeling in my heart as a creative. Well, I didn't even have any language. There was mm. zero language. There was, you know, uh, it was just, this is the cookie cutter Christian, you know, and yeah. this is what, this is what it looks like. And I've got a fit and, you know, it takes a number of years of running up, hitting your head against the wall before you realize this isn't working out. Yeah. But, um, but what did it for me, my sister-in-law was in the second internship in Kansas city. Um, if you're familiar with IHOP. Yeah, absolutely. Um, International house of prayer for those of you. Who, oh you know, yeah. So yeah. Yeah. And this was when it was in trailers, it was brand new and she went to, out there. And when I started getting some of the teachings, you know, I just, with Mike Bickle's teachings, the song of Solomon, the life of David, it just wrecked me. And I'm like, that's where I'm supposed to be, you know? And so it was was, like what early 2000s, probably right after they started. And yeah, 2001. Yeah. yeah. And and I went out there to visit even in the trailers and uh, I was, but it was, you know, I did feel God saying it's, you know, it's not yet or, or something. And, and it was so crushing and disappointing. Um, and, you know, only hindsight, I realized this, but I got colitis very bad right mm. after that. Wow. And I know, you know, a hope deferred makes a heart sick, but a desire fulfilled is a tree of life. And I realized I had heart sickness, you know, of just for, for so many years. You know, it's interesting. I'm, I'm thinking back in those days, that was a real pivotal time for me as well, because I had grown up in the Methodist church and then gone to Brownsville in the late nineties. Mm. And then, oh, oh yeah. And then ended up leading worship at a church that our pastor was on staff at the school of ministry. And we were down there and he was very close friends with Mike Bickle. And so we had a lot of those guys coming through our church leading worship. And I'm, I'm remembering Monty Poe, uh, Joey McFadder, mm. Julie Meyer, all these guys, yep. you know, they were just the worship back there was like, Oh, you know, this is Toronto mm-hmm. was going on. People were talking mm-hmm. about soaking in the presence of the Lord. And so I, I think it's interesting though. You talk about this whole heart sickness because Mm-hmm. I mean, I really believe that, you know, the more we get close to Jesus, the more we spend time in his presence, not only are we losing all the, the stuff that hangs on us and the stuff that has been, you know, trying to uh, take our attention from him, but also the more he's magnifying himself through us and, and putting the spotlight on who he really created us to be. And I think yes. that's kind of what I'm hearing you say that, man, I'm in God's presence, but at the same time, I'm also realizing that I'm not walking in everything that, that he's, he's given mm-hmm. me to walk in. Is that, is that a fair statement? Yeah. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. Just the, the desire. And I think also the thinking I need to go there mm. to go deeper. Yeah. And yeah. when you want to go deeper and you've got this block of, oh, I have to go there and, and you can't, it's just, uh, you know, and it, working a job that you're not crazy about. And then, getting the colitis. So I had that for 13 years straight, a flare up. Oh my gosh. End. Wow. And I lost my job. I, I ended up starting a business just because I couldn't get a job. And so um, it was a lot of, you know, I mean, my life, I have an awesome life, you know, it sounds horrible to say it all at once. <laughs> the story's not over struggle. yet. Keep telling it. Right? <laughs> uh, it was a struggle. So um, well, I'll fast forward to the art part. Um, so I was Basically, one day I'm built. We built a house to sell to try to make money. You know, being sick and stuff. And um, I'm working on the house one day, and uh, I'm. I always did everything um, like really hard. I didn't realize it was the artist in me. So I built the house. It was hard to build it because of the design. I went with wood siding, field stone. It takes so long, and yeah. I'm thinking to myself why am I doing this? Why do I do this? It's so much work. Nobody else does it this way. And I felt, you know, in the back, you know, just you're an artist. And I thought, what? That doesn't make sense. And so my, my brother-in-law's mom, who we were close with, she had had a dream. And my wife saying, you need to call Lori. You need to ask her what the dream was. Yeah. So that day I was frustrated. I called her and I said, uh, you know, Lori, what's the dream? She had a dream that she said, I saw you on CNN and you were holding up a canvas and they said now it's time for artwork by chad atkins and the the host was a nancy grace 
And I said, Lori, do you know what that means to me? And she said, no. I'm like, my entire life, I drew until I was 19. Wow. And anybody that met me after 19 didn't know that because I never talked about it. It was, mm. you know, which was mostly everybody I knew. And so that kind of shook me and I was, I didn't know how to fit it in <laughs> my cookie cutter, you know, it didn't fit yeah. in the cookie cutter view. And I, I even looked into it and I realized the name Nancy is Hebrew for favor or grace. Wow. And I'm like, is, is God saying grace, grace to paint? <laughs> and I, love it. I, I double portion yeah right? <laughs> yeah yeah so i i dragged my feet this was october 2009 and my wife bought me an easel and i still let it sit there because listen i was like oh so one day in january i sat down and i tried to paint a picture and that was it it was like oh you know this is what i was meant to do yeah wow you know it's in my dna yeah, absolutely. So from there, you know, just a simple yes, deciding that you're going to start start pursuing that. How many years ago was that now? I mean, for you? Uh, so that was 2009. And so for a couple of years, I went hardcore. And then we had sold our house that I had built to, to sell. And then we had to renovate another house. And with two kids, it you know, it was until about 2018 when I had finished this house now. And I felt that, you know, I need to go back to, to painting. Yeah. So it was four years ago. And uh, so I started to paint every single night after work and just pursue and work through the whole uh, thing. And then two years ago, discovering your, your uh, podcasts really helped a yeah. lot of just I'm not alone. <laughs> yeah, so many you know? people, I think, especially if, you've, if you don't have any context for what we're talking about, you know, living yeah. a life as an artist in the kingdom. I mean, it's when you, it, when you find it, you're like, if it's like finding water in the desert, I mean, for so many people and yeah, it's, yes. it's just, it's just amazing. You know, I, I'm amazed, Chad, that so many of us can, I mean, I, I was the same way. I lived life like this just for a long time, just trying to perform, just trying to do the best I knew how to do, not really ever having a context for, my creativity, like with my basketry and, and the artwork that I was doing with that. And I thought that my life had to fit within the, you know, the religious cookie cutter, as, as you said, yeah. what would you say to somebody that's out there right now? That's in the same kind of situation. Maybe they're just listening to the pod. Maybe this is their first time listening to the podcast and, and the Lord's brought them to this episode with you. And they're like, Oh my gosh, this guy is like telling my story. Maybe, maybe there's hope for me. What, what would you say to them? Well, I would say for, for me, the ways I got revelation through this was a process of, uh, I guess, letting go, mm. letting go of the ideals that I had in, in my head uh, for what it looks like to be a radical Christian. You know, I, I didn't want to be just a regular. I wanted to raise the dead. I yeah. wanted to, you know, heal the sick. And I think that if just it's a process and everyone is going to have their own way, but I began to let go actually in every area of my life, letting go of certain things that would bother me. And just even that my family says I'm more chill, I'm more relaxed. And I found the more I let go, the more revelation and understanding I began to get started to receive from the Lord. Wow. You know, uh, I, know I love it that, that you're you're not backing up from your passion from the Lord. You're not backing up from signs and wonders and seeing the kingdom demonstrated in and in and through your life, but it's just not at the expense of the design that God's given you as as an artist, right? Yes, yes, that that's true. Uh, that's uh, and that's one of the things that helped me so much with with what you do. Remember, I never I. I think I just heard the term from you, cookie cutter Christian, uh, yeah. something a number of years ago, you talking about, about there's not just one type of Christian. Yeah. And it just really, that was what I needed to hear. I'm like, yes, that's what I, sometimes yeah. you need permission almost. It sounds crazy to just receive something. You need to hear somebody else say it's not just you, Yeah, you know? Well, the, you know, you know, the enemy lies to you and uh, to all of us and you're the only one and nobody else is as weird as you are and you better just do it like this and, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah. So, 
So tell me about life right now. You still got your business, you're pursuing your art on the side hobby or business with that. And, and what's the, what's the dream here with, with your art? Well, the dream is to the business becomes the hobby <laughs> and the art becomes the business. Uh -huh. But, uh, and, but I don't know. Um, I'm, uh, I guess I'm tearing down. So I'm trying not to have too rigid view of what my future will look like. Yeah. But, um, but I do definitely, it, it's, you know, with the dream, you know, that happened in uh, 2009, I know that it's definitely part of who I am. And in mm -hmm. order I found for me to, to feel normal, you know, that I have to paint because that's what God has placed inside of me. Yeah, yeah. So how is this helping you as a dad? Um, my son is 18, so I can relate to the time mm -hmm. of life that, that you're in, how are you helping them to navigate their life as well as they're making really important decisions right now about, yeah. you know, who they are and what God's called them to do? Mm -hmm. Well, that's, that's a good question. I was thinking about that the other day. And um, so when I was a, t a teenager, I was very rigid thinking and I thought you just have to get a job at a factory and right. work hard and, you know, make money. And my son, I remember uh, a few years ago when he was in high school, I said to him, um, would you like to work in a factory or, or have, and he said, I would die if I didn't have a creative job. Mm. <laughs> and I thought I did not have that insight until yeah, like, yeah. you know, five years ago, you know, like, and so I hope the the way that the, the kids have seen me uh, start painting and trying to go in that creative area. And I think, and I like to talk about creativity a lot. Um, <clears throat> I think that that has definitely opened their mind to what's possible in life. Yeah. And uh, Well, I just love that, Chad. I mean, because you're, when any dad or any mom, parent, you know, begins to get revelation and they share that, with their kids. We say that all the time in the mentoring program, people, somebody starts going through the teaching and starts growing, you know, in their relationship with the Lord. And then they start telling their kids and the kids get changed and the husband or wife gets changed and you're, yes. you're opening a door of freedom for, mm -hmm. for them. And, and their normal will be different and more accelerated than yours was because yeah. you're choosing to do that work. And that's just, that's super exciting in it. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's true. It's, it's, Great. And, and the art I've had, uh, I've sold quite a few pieces over the past few years. Uh, my wife had a, an art show she didn't tell me about. <laughs> and uh, I just saw it on Facebook one day. Oh, I'm having an art show. And it, it, <laughs> it. went re really great. You know, I used to tell her when I was painting all the time, one day, these paintings are going to take us on a vacation. And the art show was a success. And we went to Hawaii, to Kauai, oh, the island it. after. And so it was, it was so exciting. I love you it. Know. It's amazing. I think, you know, when, when people start to you start to realize, okay, I'm an artist and then God wants God's God's design. Then God wants to use me to, to bless the lives of others. Then he wants to bless me through income, through my art. So that mm -hmm. I not only can be blessed, but I can also be a blessing to others. And it's just amazing. It's like all of a sudden the whole picture of what it means to, to live a kingdom life uh, comes into focus when you start to connect with, with who God's designed you to be. So. I'm yeah, that's, that's true. I, the kingdom life, I, uh, is something that's really opened up to me in the past year. I never really understood it much yeah. and just, uh, it's, I actually had first, you had preached at your church and I listened to your kingdom message a couple of yeah. times. I'm like, I like what he's talking about the kingdom. <laughs> And it's got me a whole this year, just downloads of yeah. just, oh, the kingdom of God, bringing it to earth. You yeah. know, it's so much more exciting. Yeah, it is. Well, and all that passion that you felt back when you first got that Smith Wigglesworth book is all mm -hmm. still there. And God's just channeling it through your design and your calling in the kingdom. And um, it's inspiring, mm -hmm. Chad. Thank you so much for, for sharing your story today. I know folks are going to want to connect with you online mm -hmm. so uh do you have a website you're on social media what's the best yeah. place for to connect with you so i have a website chadakins.org with all my art um instagram is 
think it's Chad Atkins art it should come up. And also on Facebook, uh, I have share my art on Facebook as well. Uh, they can check it out. And, uh, and if anyone has comments or stories to share, I'd love to hear it. Awesome. Awesome. Well, man, thanks so much. Just super glad that, that you're on and uh, glad the podcast has been a, a part of your journey as well. And um, mm -hmm. just can't wait to see that what God does next in your life, man. So thanks so much for being on today.